So we I come in in December of 1980, right after they passed the blizzard tax. And there was a fundamental agreement with the blizzard tax. And the blizzard tax in 1980 was increasing the sales tax. And the reason they called it the blizzard, ta blizzard uh, tax was it was done during the blizzard of uh, 1980. And so the, the, there was, there was uh, um, uh, it got tagged. And there was an agreement that the governor at the time, Jim Rhodes, would give the Republican Senate, under the control of Paul Gilmore, Tom Van Meter, and, and uh, uh, Stanley Aronoff, a balanced budget, <laughs> okay, and that they, they would do that. And that was the only reason they voted for the blizzard tax. Um, and I was made very much aware of that. So the minute, um, in the first few months that I was there, we're constantly reminded about the blizzard tax, let's be ready for the governor's budget, I was doing a lot of controlling board things and I was getting really acclimated to numbers. Now remember back there they didn't have computers, we didn't have laptops. So all these all these line items, these 1,600, 1,700 line items, all had to be hand calculated. Okay, so by the time I got the budget, I'd hand calculate everything, have up my, 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 my own charts of, of growth, etc. And uh, it was declared pretty early that the budget was not balanced. And so um, everything started to go south. The economy was continuing to decline. Jim Rhodes was digging in about his concepts. His people at OBN didn't want to share numbers with us. LBO was too much aligned with, you know, the, 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 the impression of our, our caucus was too aligned with the Democrats in the House. And so there was all this aggravation. But the one constant, as I said before, the one consistent thing that they had was their guy who was doing the numbers, they had confidence in. And so I, I, I was given this opportunity um, under a simple concept called the yes, no, maybe. And this is where they made it very clear that people would come into my office, um, I would make the decisions at that point about whether or not they were gonna be in the budget, not be in the budget, with a simple yes, no, maybe. If it was a yes, they would stand by my decision that it would not have to be a leadership vote, a yes was a yes. Um, a no would be automatically appealable to Paul Gilmore, Tom Van Meter, um, Stanley Aronoff. Uh, a maybe was a conditional statement that if you did the following things, that would push it into a category yes or no. We never broke our word. And we kept through that process. Unfortunately, the economy was so bad that there was nothing we could do about the budget. The, we come into the first, um, the first budget um, the House doesn't want any of our cuts. Um, Tom Van Meter says to the Speaker, then F you, and we went to interim budgets. And we had six of them. And as a result, we finally had to do uh, the, we did some, we did sales tax increases, and then we did the income tax increase. All said and done, by the time 1982 rolled around, um, not only because of redistricting, it was our way of doing races, it was our inability to control the bleeding in the state, uh, we, lost our, we lost the majority. So we went from 1815 to a negative, uh, we had 16, 17, 16 controlled by, by the Ds. On election night of 1982, it was complete shell shock. Some of our greatest, uh, we, some of the guys that we thought were gonna be Perfect for the, our future of the party, Vince Campanella, uh, Rocky Saxby, um, others. Well, we thought, well, we'll be great. In 1982, we got smoked. We lost everything. We lost Supreme Court, lost the Senate, lost everything that we could possibly do, and everyone was without a job. I mean, pink, people were pink slipped. The Democrats were aggressive. They. If you made a comment about Dick Celeste, they, Ruvalo had no problem stopping you in the street saying, you shouldn't talk like that. And um, for me, um, that thing about all these people coming in to see me soon came to an end. Um, I lost my, my title, um, lost my parking space. But then the, the whole cream of, of this whole dessert they were dishing to me was put when I was watching the Browns, the second Browns Bengals game for the season. I got a call saying, you know, you need to move out of your office. I said, I know I'm coming down today. 
I'll take care of it today. They said, not to worry, it's already in the hallway. So all of my stuff was moved and put onto the floor. And that's when I realized that I could no longer play being this kind of bipartisan guy, being this nice guy that, that you know, I want to just do policy. I uh, embraced the fact that you have to be partisan in this place. And that was that single act of, of being humiliated was no different than being humiliated in the streets of Cleveland or in school because of my father's background. And I said, never again. I never again will I be involved in a race in which I just do enough to make my bosses happy. And that's what we did in 1982. We didn't have a direct mail operator. We did lit drops and we went to candidates' places and we passed out garbage. We just passed out garbage and we weren't really doing a message. We weren't doing a, a theme and it was just junk. And that junk put us in the minority.